Hello and welcome to a fresh new episode of Science Monitor, our weekly update on all that is happening in the field of science and technology in and around the country. I'm Ashwarya Kapoor with you. Today we'll talk about the performance of Indian students at the Intel Science Fair and the novel Cora Kit for Patients. Besides this, we'll also discuss about the International Biodiversity Day. But before going into the details, let's take a look at the headlines. India shines at the Intel Science Fair, students get back with awards. Cora, novel stool management kit to aid bedridden patients. Aspiring to become a geologist? We will tell you how in our segment Career in Science. In our In Focus segment today, we will discuss about the International Biodiversity Day and its significance. And now the news in detail. World's largest international pre-college science competition, Intel International Science and Engineering Fair, recently concluded in Phoenix, Arizona. The competition held during 8th to 13th of May saw the participation of approximately 1,700 high school students from over 75 countries. Now, India shined at the Intel Fair as a beating tough competition. Indian students have bagged awards under various categories. So, what were their experiences and how was India's performance? Let us see in this report. As curtains fell on the 2016 Intel International Science and Engineering Fair, India had much to cheer about. For Indian students beating severe competition among 1700 high school students from over 75 countries have returned home bagging prestigious awards under various categories at the Intel ISEF Fair. The event held in Phoenix, Arizona during 8th to 13th May saw outstanding performance by Indian students bagging both best category and special awards. एक्सपीरियंस बहुत ही अच्छा रहा और इतने सारे बच्चों को लेकर के गए एक नई कंट्री में नई जगह पे जा करके और इतने सारे बच्चों मतलब मोर देन 1700 वहां बच्चे थे उन बच्चों के बीच में हमारे बच्चों ने बहुत अच्छा परफॉर्म किया हम लोगों ने अवार्ड भी लिया है तीन ग्रैंड है और तीन स्पेशल है जिनको नहीं मिला लेकिन वो भी बहुत ही खुश हैं क्योंकि एक वहां जाकर के पार्टिसिपेट करना ये अपने आप में एक बहुत बड़ी अपॉर्चुनिटी है while Shreyas Kapoor won the third grand award of $1000 for his project cell phone based optometry using hybrid images in biomedical engineering section i received uh, uh, two special awards from nasa and google uh, as well as the third grand, grand award at the intel isf my experience was absolutely amazing i think i think in keeping all these smart people in a single room together is such a great idea and then you you exchange these scientific thoughts together i think it was absolutely brilliant Vasudev Mallyan won the fourth grand award of $500 for his project, a novel paper sensor as a diagnostic test for multiple sclerosis in translation medical science. The category was translation medical sciences. It's a new category this year, so luckily I'm the first one from India to win an award. In. So the feeling is that this is, this was my third time and I made an award. It's really amazing. So the feeling is that I could I did made my country proud. And Sohani Sachin Jain, along with Divya Kranti, won the third grand award of $1,000 for their project, Innovative Strategy Using Endophytes for Effective Biocontrol of Insect Pests in Cotton in Plant Sciences. Uh, my project was about immunizing cotton plants against insect pests of cotton using an endophyte and enhancing the capability of the endophyte with cow dung and biochar. Uh, it was a great international exposure and when uh, you know many people come together you have so much of fun and so uh, you get to learn about many things that you couldn't have come across at school or at any other place you go so it's a very nice experience. Indian students also won four special prizes at Intel ISEF Fair. While special awards under the category Google Thinking Big Award that addresses a large social problem, National Aeronautics and Space Administration and USAID Global Development Innovation Award went to Shreyas Kapoor. 
the MU Alpha Theta Award given to the most challenging, thorough and creative investigation of a problem involving mathematics went to Arvind Krishna Ranganathan for his project a deterministic approach to the position, trajectory and collision prediction of particles within bounded two-dimensional environments. Under bedridden conditions, it becomes extremely difficult to carry out day-to-day -day tasks. Matters worsen if the patient suffers from diarrhea or other stomach-related disorders and needs a frequent access to toilets. While it is a common practice to use adult diapers in such cases, they often fail to be effective and hygienic. Inadequate bowel movement is one of the chief problems of bedridden patients, which concern both the patient and caregivers as like. The problem becomes more severe if the patients suffer from diarrhea or other abdominal disorders, which impairs bowel control. While hospitals and caregivers routinely use devices like adult diapers and absorbent pads in such cases, these commonly used measures are not often fully effective and hygienic. Besides, being time-consuming and increasing the cost of healthcare management, such measures often cause complications such as pressure ulcers and infections among patients, along with high degree of discomfort and inconvenience to both patients and care providers. Now, tackling all these problems is CORA, a novel closed system stool management kit for bedridden patients. The kit developed by Conshaw Medical was recently dedicated to the public by Sri Y. S. Chaudhary, Honorable Minister of State for Science and Technology and Earth Sciences at Delhi. Cora is a novel stool management kit which hygienically converts liquid discharge in bedridden patients into semi-formed stool. It's a product for uh, management of incontinence, uh, basically uh, in layman terms, like uh, you know, what happens when a baby passes stool, you put a diaper, what happens when an old person in ICU passes stool, you again put a diaper, but that's not the best way uh, to uh, uh, manage fecal incontinence. So this is a product which will manage fecal incontinence while improving the care for the patients. We were at Stanford University and one of our co-founders actually, his mother at that time uh, was in an ICU. And this person is a very big cardiologist and he's like, you know, I can think about all the latest and greatest medical technology, but there's this one condition about fecal incontinence that there is no solution anywhere for this product. So can we do something about that? So that's when sort of the apple uh, dropped in front of us and we we're like, hey, we need to solve a problem, a benign problem of incontinence. More than 100 million people uh, annually that suffer from incontinence are trying to solve that problem. The device which comes with an applicator, sampling irrigation and withdrawal ports and disposable collection bag helps hygienic and safe fecal management in bedridden patients. The kit is designed to reduce the risk of infections and ulcers and do not cause any physical or physiological discomfort. This novel kit not only brings hope of comfort and hygiene to bedridden patients, but also minimizes nursing time and effort of the caregivers. Cora, already tested in tertiary care hospitals, have demonstrated its safety and efficacy and may soon be a part of routine healthcare management in the country. demand in energy, explorations undertaken to dig out new fuel resources, oil and gas has also increased. At the same time, the demand for trained geologists has also increased. As a geologist, one has many options to explore. If uh, delving into the mysteries of Earth fascinates you, then geology is the right field. So how can one become a geologist, what to study and where to study? Well, let us uh, see in our next segment. Career in Science.
what are the elements and novel materials that earth hides within its interiors why and how does composition of soil vary from place to place answering these and many more questions related to earth is the modern scientific discipline known as geology despite all the advances currently we have been able to access only a small percent of the natural resources that earth carries within itself but if delving into the mysteries of earth fascinates you and you have a scientific outlook towards the same then geology is the right field of study with increasing demand in energy explorations undertaken to dig out new fuel resources oil and gas has also increased besides recent years have seen increased demand in surface transport leading to construction of new roads and flyovers under these circumstances the demand for trained geologists has also increased both in public and private sectors and especially in the area of mining so after the masters degree the a person can, is qualified to work in the industry or the government as a geologist or as a hydrogeologist or as a petroleum geologist so masters degree is sufficient and they can get the uh, get absorbed in the government of india like geological survey of india central ground water board atomic minerals division coal india limited oil and natural gas commission oil india limited at the same time nowadays there are geospatial management for resource evaluation are also being done by indian space research organization space application center and different state remote sensing application centers Geologists are trained to assess natural disasters like earthquakes along with discovering element resources inside earth. In order to pursue a career in geology, one needs to have a basic foundation of mathematics, chemistry and physics. Following which, one can do a graduation followed by post graduation. Aspiring students can pursue an MTech degree in geology by clearing the graduate aptitude test or GATE. The students, those who are uh, in their plus two after uh, passing 12th class, mm -hmm. if they are interested to pursue their studies in geology, they should take the geology either in the mathematical wing or in the towards the chemistry and biological wing there are different combinations like physics mathematics and geology which is known as pmg group either they can take geology botany chemistry or geology geography chemistry so these are different combinations in the graduation level but all these combinations are having different benefits in order to do a phd in geology one needs to fulfill the standards prescribed by ugc some of the leading institutions that provide courses in geology are pondicherry university pondicherry hansraj college delhi university himachal pradesh university dharamshala banaras hindu university banaras iit kharagpur or iit roorkee some of the premier institutions which offer phd in various aspects of geology include center for earth sciences indian institute of science bangalore csir national geophysical research institute hyderabad csir center for mathematical modeling and computer simulation bangalore central mining research institute dhanbad national institute of technology durgapur national institute of technology hamirpur Today, geologists have the wide options of career in research, academics, industries, geological agencies, agriculture, environment and forest sector. With persistence and passion, one can create a niche for oneself in the growing discipline with a great future.
And now it is time to take a short break. We'll be back with more science news. Keep watching Science Monitor. Welcome back. After the break, you're watching Science Monitor. Let us now have a look at some important science and technology activities happening in India and abroad in our next segment, Science Express. In a matter of great pride for the entire Indian scientific community, Indian origin scientist Dr. Rakesh Jain has been presented U.S.'s highest science award, National Medal of Science by the U.S. President Barack Obama. Dr. Jain, a professor of tumor biology at Massachusetts General Hospital in the Harvard Medical School and an alumnus of IIT Kanpur, is known for his outstanding work in the field of tumor biology, especially studies on the impact of tumor blood cells on chemotherapy and radiation treatment. In yet another recognition for the Indian scientific community, Professor U. R. Rao, former Chairman ISRO and Secretary, Department of Space, has been honoured by the International Astronautical Federation with the 2016 IAF Hall of Fame Award. Professor Rao has been recognised for his outstanding contribution to the progress of astronautics within the framework of the IAF activities. Adding to the efforts of promoting renewable energy and sustainable development global development, India is now home to world's largest rooftop solar plant. World's largest rooftop solar power plant was recently inaugurated in Amritsar city by the Chief Minister Prakash Singh Badal. The power plant with a capacity of 19.5 megawatts is spread across 82 acres on multiple roofs in a single campus. The project is expected to generate clean and green energy sufficient to power approximately 8,000 homes. Our Earth is home to billions of species of plants and animals which are very different from each other. But despite their differences, they are all connected to each other in a natural chain. Now, these vast and beautiful differences in life forms constitute biodiversity. Even humans are dependent on this natural biodiversity for many economic activities like agriculture, fisheries and even ecotourism. Now, under these circumstances, uh, conserving biodiversity is a necessity. Driving home this message is the International Biodiversity Day that is celebrated on 22nd of May every year. So what is biodiversity and how can we conserve it? Well, this will be the topic of our discussion in our next segment in Focus. Earth the only planet blessed with the miracle of life. From the tiniest patch of soil and smallest drop of water to the large Amazon forests and vast Saharan deserts, Earth is teeming with hundreds and thousands of various kinds of life forms. This vast and wide variety and variability of life that exists on Earth is referred to as biodiversity. While no one knows exactly how many species of plants and animals exist on Earth, a study estimates that there might be about 8.74 million species on Earth, including 7.77 million species of animals and 2,98,000 species of plants, excluding microbial species. According to statistics, some 10,000 new species are discovered each year and the total number of species on Earth may be up to 50 million. Biodiversity on Earth is a result of almost 3.5 billion years of constant evolution, during which life originated and continuously evolved and diverged to form various organisms on Earth. As a result, biodiversity on Earth is not evenly distributed 
and depends largely on environmental factors like on temperature, rainfall, altitude, soils, geography and the presence of other species. It is generally seen that biodiversity measures higher in the tropical regions of the world and in other localized regions such as the Cape Floristic region and is lower in regions with extreme climate like the poles. Rainforests with wet climates for a long time generally harbor very high biodiversity. Despite their wide distribution, all the organisms on Earth are linked to each other in a natural chain and have specific roles to perform in the natural ecosystem. Loss of even one link in the chain can interrupt the link and cause major imbalances. And this, unfortunately, is what has been happening in the past few decades. Reckless human activities, including large-scale destruction of forests, poaching, indiscriminate use of chemical insecticides and pesticides, introduction of new hybrids, destruction of wetlands for construction and other purposes, creation of oil slicks, etc has led to the mass destruction of thousands of species of plants and animals. According to a study by the World Wildlife Fund, Earth has lost 52% of its biodiversity since 1970. And if the present scenario continues, it is estimated that up to 30% of all species will be extinct by 2050, with loss of about 1,40,000 species per year. As per the Red Data Book of International Union for Conservation of Nature, there are about 132 species of plants and animals in India alone, listed as critically endangered. And this includes species like the white-bellied heron, the Indian tiger and dolphin, olive ridley turtles, etc. Today, there are 25 biologically rich areas around the world that have lost at least 70% of their original habitat known as biodiversity hotspots. According to experts, loss of biodiversity is a huge concern as it has a huge impact on the health of the planet and in turn on all our lives. Human beings directly or indirectly depend upon this connected web of life called biodiversity for all the economical activities including food. Losses in biodiversity will cause significant changes in ecosystem functioning and will adversely affect nutrient cycles, soil contents and environmental conditions such as water cycles, weather patterns and climate. Keeping these issues in view and with the aim of creating awareness about biodiversity, the United Nations has proclaimed 22nd May as the International Day for Biological Diversity. While the theme of last year's International Day for Biological Diversity was Biodiversity for Sustainable Development, this year it will be focused on mainstreaming biodiversity, sustaining people and their livelihoods. This year's theme underpins human livelihoods and sustainable development in all areas of activity, including economic sectors like agriculture, forestry, fisheries and tourism and aims to halt biodiversity loss along with promoting human well-being. While governments across the globe are promoting conservation of biodiversity by ways of national parks and reserve forests, it is also the duty of each and every citizen to protect the biodiversity on Earth. So, this International Biodiversity Day let us all pledge to conserve the biodiversity in our localities by following some simple steps. Well, that is all for this episode of Science Monitor. Do tell us how do you like our program. You can send your feedback and suggestions. Our email ID is news at vigyanpasar.gov.in. You can also write into us at vigyanpasar c24, Kutub Institutional Area, New Delhi 110016. Well, that is all for today, but we'll be back with fresh new stories on science and technology again next week. Till then, stay tuned to Rajasabha TV and think scientific. Bye-bye.